Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Dave's iPhone Photography. In this episode, I'm going to talk about some of the accessories that I've bought for my iPhone. Um, now, accessories that you might consider buying uh, really depend on what type of photographs you want to do with your, with your iPhone. <clears throat> if you're just using your iPhone for snapshots, you don't need any of these. Maybe, maybe one or two of them would, would help, but... You know, you don't need anything just to be able to take snapshots of the family or whatever. Um, the, the stock cameras are absolutely fine. Um, but these will help if you want to expand your repertoire a little bit. Um, so personally, I like taking landscape photography, uh, street photography, um, and kind of architecture, sorry, urban photography. That That's the kind of stuff that I enjoy taking photos of. Um, bizarrely, I don't really take that many photographs of of people, the sort of snapshot type photographs. Um, I, I always forget for some reason. Um, but, so the, the kit that I've bought is suitable for my style of photography. They augment what I needed to do. Uh, they, they help what I wanted. So, um, I'm just going to run through the stuff that I've bought. Um, I'll try and remember how much I paid for it roughly. Um, and I'll give you the pros and cons. And there's maybe slightly surprising uh, how this works out, but uh, we'll just jump in. I will say that software helps, so um, you know the apps that you use will also help uh, improve your photography and, and what you're trying to do. Um, the stock camera app is brilliant, um, but there are a few other apps that can help depending on what you're taking photographs of. Um, I'll be talking about the apps and software and editing and all that kind of stuff in another video. Um, this one's just a, about the kind of the, the toys that I've bought to to add on to the phone essentially. Um, so we'll start. I've got them all laid out in front of the camera here. You can obviously can't see them. Don't want to spoil the surprise. But we'll start with the probably most hated accessory that you can get, but I think it's it's very useful, and that is the selfie stick. Um, so this one that I bought, if I can loosen the neck off, there we go. So this is specifically for uh, iPhones that use the, the Thunderbolt connection. You do get like normal Bluetooth ones. I didn't want a Bluetooth one because if you're out for a long time, um, it runs your battery down because it's constantly connected to Bluetooth. Um, so all of these basically I bought for going to New York. Um, that, that was the big kind of impetus and what drove the whole can I use my iPhone as a as a proper camera? Um, so I bought all of these to try and take, I knew the sort of photographs that I wanted to take in New York. Um, so I thought I'm gonna get some of these things just to see if they can help. So the selfie stick, um, it's got a little mirror on it and all that kind of stuff. Um, this is just a, it's like a little clip. And I think this one, the one thing I will say is if you're buying peripherals like selfie sticks and things like that, the the lens kits that I've got don't really matter, but selfie sticks and things they tend to be specific for certain phones because of this this is this gap here. Um, this stretches out to hold your phone, um, and now I can't show you it because I'm filming this on my phone. But um, your phone sits in there, so like an iPhone, uh, an iPhone S or whatever will sit in there quite happily. This will hold us. Uh, I've got the iPhone Seven Plus. Um, and it will extend out to that. Um, if you want to take photographs on your iPad, I think you need to rethink your life choices because it's it's not the best thing for taking photographs on. The camera's not brilliant. Um, it won't obviously take an iPad, and plus you'd need biceps like Arnold Schwarzenegger to carry an iPad about all the time. So, anyway, this extends to what, I have no idea what that is. That's probably about two feet, maybe, something like that. Um, and it's obviously fully posal you can you can change the angle of the head and all that kind of stuff um, and that just plugs into your phone uh, and there's a little button that triggers the, the camera so all good very simple I think I paid seven pound for that off of Amazon and um, it's got a little mirror so that if you're taking selfies with the, the kind of the better camera like the back camera you can see what you're taking photographs of I don't really use that but because I don't take selfies um, but what I do use this for is it's very handy for if you do uh, like video blogging. Um, you know, you can just extend this, point the camera at yourself and just walk about and talk and do whatever you do. 
Um, but I also use this, it's really handy for alternative type shots. So I'll point this at the floor, I'll angle it up like that and I'll point it out the floor and take photographs at, at foot level. Um, you know, a shot that you don't often see because if people are taking sort of snapshots and stuff, they'll take them at eye level and that's what you're used to seeing all the time. So the f photograph's fairly interesting, you know, depending on what you capture. But if you get a different angle, you know, pointing that at the floor and even doing your vlogging, walking about, getting video of people's feet as you're walking about or whatever, it just makes it a little bit more interesting. So it's good for that. Um, the only trouble is, is when you're down there, you can't see what you're taking photographs of which I'll talk about in a little minute. I've got a little solution for that, albeit an expensive one. Um, but you know, you can just, the great thing about these, these phones and stuff is you can obviously just take 10 shots and see how it looks, you know? So you can just fire away and take your shots and do your thing. Um, <clears throat> and the inverse of obviously pointing this at the ground is pointing it straight up in the air. So you can hold this, you know, and extend yourself. So I'm, I'm about five foot 10, so you can get a photograph taken from seven feet up in the air. In fact, more than that, because obviously my arm's up, so maybe eight feet up in air, you can angle this down, take shots and get a different different perspective on things. So from that point of view, the selfie stick is great. Um, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not a guy that'll take selfies off himself. You know, I don't stand and take lots of photographs of myself. Um because buildings and things are far more interesting than my ragged old face. But um so it's a useful peripheral peripheral to have. And, and really cheap. Like I say, I got this off of Amazon. It is called a, a Rock something. I'll put links to all this stuff in the descriptions uh, down below so you can have a look if you like. Like I say, I think it was about seven quid. Um, no batteries, so it doesn't run your battery down, um, unlike the Bluetooth ones, but uh, a nice little bit of kit. While I'm talking about batteries, actually, I might as well just talk about this bit of kit. Um, a battery pack so this is a power add something i've no idea what it is um oh there you go it's a bhf 0091 now i did various reviews of of battery packs and things um to try and see what would suit my needs um and again i'll put links to all this stuff so don't don't worry about trying to kind of track what it is um this was about 14 pounds i think um and it's a it's it's fairly weighty. Um, it's probably about the weight of two cans of Coke, something like that. Um, but this will charge an iPhone 7 Plus from dead to full about eight times on a single charge of this. Um, it's got two USB ports. Let's see if we can do that. Two USB ports. Um, and I don't know if this will do it. Come on. There we go. Way. It's got a torch. I can never turn on and off. I never know. There you go. You just press and hold the button. So there's a button on the top of it, um, and you, when you press that, it shows you. So I've got three out of four bars of charge left in this, and if you press and hold it again, that's when I think. Oh God! Anyway, that's. I never use the torch. I didn't buy this to be a torch, but there is a torch functionality, which is good if you're out. You know, maybe doing a night shoot or something like that, and you need to rummage about in your bag, you can just use this to click it on. Um, so I took this because I knew I was going to be taking lots of photographs in New York. Um, I did have to charge up my phone once using this. Um, so it comes with a USB cable, uh, which has got the sort of micro USB end on it and the normal USB. So obviously you plug that in to charge whatever, and that slots into, there's a slot on the side to charge the actual battery pack. You can plug this in, I've plugged this into my iPhone charger to, to give this a, a bigger boost. If you try and charge it off a USB port, it'll take quite a while to charge up. Uh, I charged this up for about four hours on the first charge, and it got, that's that's kind of, it took about four hours to do a first charge to full. I haven't charged it, it's now, where are we, halfway through November, uh, and I got this the end of September, and I haven't charged it and it's still got three bars of charge in it, so it does hold its charge. I will say, having dragged this about New York in a bag, in a rucksack, it does, you do feel the weight of it over time, but it's it's a great bit of kit to have. If you're out on an extended day's, you know, photo trip or whatever, um, and you're worried about your battery going, it is a great thing to have. If you've got a car with you or whatever on your photo shoot, then, you know, you can leave it in the car if it's not too far. Um, but it's a great, great thing to have, and then you're not worrying about your your battery running out halfway through it. You know, professional photographers carry batteries 
uh, all the time. You know, they've always got two or three spare for their DSLRs. So, you know, why not do the same thing? Especially with your phone using so much, you know, because it's a phone. It's constantly using the battery and it will just naturally run down over time. So if you're adding, taking videos and, and photographs and all that kind of stuff to that, that mix, your battery will run down. I have to say, <clears throat> off a full charge, um, uh, generally speaking, on a 10 or 11 hour day walking around New York taking lots of photos, I took 1400 photographs in four days um, and I only had to charge the phone once and that's because it was down about 20%. Um, so I think the iPhone 7 Plus will, uh, I've not used the, the iPhone 8 or obviously the 10, um, but the 7 Plus using multiple modes and, and all that kind of stuff and recording video and everything, um, it lasted it lasted a day no problem. Um, so the battery on it is really good. Uh, it's just nice to have that little bit of backup. Um, <clears throat> so the next thing I'm going to talk about is lenses because the iPhone lens is great and on the 7 plus you've obviously got the sort of telephoto lens it's a wide lens and then you've got a telephoto lens um and and they are great for for your normal shots um now i mentioned at the beginning that i like to take photographs of architecture and i knew that i was going to be taking photos of the rockefeller center which is obviously whatever it is 75 stories high or something like that and you can't take photographs of that stuff with the normal camera because you'd need well you can, you need to lie, lie on the floor basically to do it. Um, so I thought I'm going to get myself a wide angle lens, it just gives you that little bit of extra, extra space. Um, and then you can f fix the photographs in post production to because obviously the, the buildings will be leaning away from you because of the way it, the way the camera works. Um, I think it's called parallel distortion when it does that because of the way the sensor is and stuff. Anyway, um, you can fix that in post-production and kind of straighten things up. But I wanted that little bit extra room um, or extra visibility with the, with the camera. So I bought a, a wide-angle lens. Um, now, I'd actually bought a kit of lenses um, that were about 20 quid, 20 pounds. Um, uh, when it was just a sort of hobby, this was way, way before I went to New York, when I first got my kind of iPhone 7. So I'm going to get some extra lenses for it just to kind of play about with macro lens, telephoto, um, all that kind of stuff. So I got a nice little kit which I'll look at in a second. Um, but when I was going to New York, I thought, right, I want a kind of good, good quality professional lens. So I did some research, and uh, basically you can get various lenses for your your iPhone. You can get the most popular tend to be Olo Clip or Moment. Um, now Olo Clip is a, a little sort of bracket that sits over the top of your phone um, and the lens sits right over your your camera lens obviously um, however I've got a case on my my phone um, which has got a, a wrist strap because I wanted to be able to kind of point my camera off the edge of buildings or whatever have the wrist strap on and know that if the phone slipped out my hand I wasn't watching a thousand pounds worth of phone flying down 70 stories or whatever. Um, so the wrist strap, you know, although it was like two pounds, is, is just gives you that little extra bit of confidence that you're not going to drop your phone down some mine shaft or something. Um, so it, that limited the auto clip. Um, but there are the next sort of lens, it's the auto clip stuff, I think, I can't remember how much they are because I discounted them, but I think they're around 70 pounds, something like that. The next sort of professional ones are are the moment lenses. Now the moment lenses look fantastic. Um, and the difference with the moment lens is it comes with a case. Um, so the Olo clip just slides, I'll, you know, I've got my iPad here because let's say I'm filming this. So the Olo clip basically slides, it's a clip that sits along the top and the, the, the lenses are always perfect over the, the actual lens of your, your camera. Um, the moment pack has a has a, an all-encompassing case you can actually buy a case with an extra battery in it um, and it's like a tough shell case and then you just screw the lens in and the moment lenses like I say are, are beautiful the quality of them seems to be amazing um, and there are various lenses or wide angle lenses zoom lenses macro lenses all sorts of things but they are about a hundred pounds each um, 
and for me that was too much and you know if I was doing I don't know it's here it's a strange market that because you, you wouldn't do professional photography I, you know you wouldn't the, the iPhone is great for for hobbyists you know and and you can get beautiful A4 prints to put in your house and all that kind of stuff and, and get great memories and great shots and for me it's it's brilliant but you wouldn't you know you wouldn't photograph a wedding on this or or a you know a sort of professional thing and I think if you're looking at paying a hundred pounds for a lens you're up at that sort of professional market the 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 average hobbyist isn't going to spend a hundred pounds on a lens much as I would like to I can't afford to spend a hundred pounds on a lens um just got a little notification come up there but um yeah I can't afford to spend a hundred pounds on one lens and then have multiple lenses you know because you, you need two or three um so for me that was that the budget for that was was too much so the next kind of level down was a uh, Aukey A U K E Y or Aukey Aukey whatever I don't know they're, they're French um it's a French manufacturer and um and and they, those got really good reviews so I had a look and the I, basically I wanted a wide angle lens like I say that that was the thing that I wanted so I had a look and the Aukey wide angle lens got really good reviews um, and I think it was £23 for the lens um, so I have it here and it comes in a nice little case this is kind of a tough case which is nice so I'll show you what you get so this, this is the sort of clip on lens and um, so you get this clip now one other reason about getting this is i watched a review there's a, a youtube channel called tiny shutter um and he bought this lens and this clip here um basically it clips onto your device like so you line it up so you line it up so your lens is obviously in the middle of this hole and it just clips on um, and it will fit anything and the great thing about these clip on lenses is you can put them over a phone with a case as long as your case isn't huge um, but I mean, you know, you get that much clippage, so it does it does kind of break open quite a lot. But um, yeah, that there, I think I can't remember what size the uh, screw hole that is, but you can get um, converters for actual DSLR lenses. So basically, you get a little cap that fits in there, which opens up to the full width of a, a DSLR lens. So technically, you could use this to adapt a full proper camera lens on your iPhone which would be a horrible beast. Obviously, you wouldn't be using your iPad, but it would be a huge beast to be carrying about. But if you wanted professional results, in theory, it's, it's doable. Anywho, that's a side tangent. Um, in this little case here, it's a nice little foam padded, I don't know if we'll see it, there we go. Foam kind of case where everything fits. You get a little lens cloth, which is nice, and you get the lens itself. Now, the lens, there we go, it's the, the Aukey, 0.45 wide angle lens and it's also a macro lens and this gives 120 degrees of spread basis versus your normal phone um, now I have got sample shots taken with all this stuff which I'll kind of show at the end of the video so you can compare the, the the different lenses so you basically get this this lens which has got a cap on it and a screw cap on the back of it now the glass the quality of these is really nice you can see the kind of reflective tint on it and it's a it's a heavy lens, you know, it's a good good quality lens and it just screws in there we go, and it just screws in and then that is your your lens there that you, you take your shots with um, now I'm not going to show you the the thing with and without because it, it would be too hard to try and show it on there but like I say, I've got shots at the end which show you with and without um, so that was about 20 what did I say, 23, 24 pounds, something like that. Um, now I haven't obviously tried the, the DSLR adapter part because uh, I don't have any DSLR lenses. Um, but I think it would be a bit crazy to, to try and do all that stuff. Um, one thing I will say, I took this to New York with me um, because it's a, it's a good quality lens. Um, I would say, don't waste your money on this. Um, it does have a macro lens as well, um, so the macro lens is pretty good on it. So you know, if you take up really up close shots, it is a good macro lens. But I noticed that for uh, wide angle shots, 
like my shots of the uh, the Rockefeller Center, it softens at the edges. Now I was very very careful to get it bang on, um, you know, lined up with the the iPhone. And you can tweak it. You can see when you put it on, you can see sometimes there's softness or or vignetting where the the lens is kind of the cap is just covering the corner of your lens or something. So you do kind of play with that and make sure it's all lined up properly. And I tried to get the best that I could. Some of the shots turned out okay, but some of the shots did have softness, which was slightly disappointing. And you'll see that in the test shots at the end of the video. Um, so, unless you want to get DSLR adapters and use this, um, I would say that the Aki is not brilliant. I wish it was because it's a it's a really it's a really nice looking lens, you know, and it's it's a, it feels like a quality bit of kit. Did I just hit the camera there? Um, it feels like a good quality bit of kit, but the results on that weren't what I expected, um, which was a shame. Now, I also bought an Aki polarising filter because this just comes in a little bag, um, and it's the same same kind of deal. This is this is useful if you're taking photos of of water and all that kind of stuff. You do get kind of nice results. Um, it's just a circular polarising filter which kind of cuts out some of the sun glare. So if you're taking photographs of clouds and things like that, you can get a little bit more dynamic range with it. And it's the same kind of deal, just a little clip. Um, I think I used that once when I was in New York. I keep hitting that camera, sorry. This <laughs> is on a tripod. Um, yes, I think that was about £9. Um, and it's all right. It's, it's fine. Um, but what I would say is the Aki stuff is nice quality. It's all, you know, the, the, the actual sort of lenses and things are metal and the quality of the glass is really nice on them. Um, but for the money, I don't know. Maybe it's just the experience I've had, I've had with them. I was slightly disappointed. Um, and surprisingly, when I came back and did the test shots, now I didn't, I've got another kit here, right? Um, I didn't take this to New York. Part of my wishes I had now because when I did the test shots, uh, when I knew I was going to do this video, I went out and took some test shots of things to let you see the difference between the different lenses and all that kind of stuff. And I was really surprised by the quality of these. Now, this is a, a kit by I think a Cam Kicks. You get these on Amazon, and I think it's like 17 quid for this kit. Um, and what you get with this, you get a nice little case, you get a wrist strap. So it is camkicks.com, I don't know if we'll see that, there we go. Um, this comes with a Bluetooth uh, remote for your shutter, which works with iPhone and Android. Um, so you just sync it up to Bluetooth, then you can just click the button and take a photo. Um, you get a little cleaning cloth, which is nice. With this kit, you get four, well actually five lenses. Now I've written the, the names of them on the top, just so as I remember. Same deal with the, the clip um, on your for your phone. Um, so what you get here is you get a two times zoom lens, you get a fish eye lens, circular polarizing filter, a wild, wide I can't talk a wide angle lens which also doubles up as a macro lens. Now these lenses, let me just get the Aki lens out as well just to show you. So there's the Aki lens. And there is the uh, the Cam Kicks lens. I shouldn't have worn a black t-shirt for this. Let's see if we can do that. There you go. So, bit of a difference. Um, and that was another reason I got the the Aki lens because these lenses are are small, and they obviously let in less light. So that would in theory affect your picture quality. Um, but surprisingly, what I found, certainly in daylight conditions, I haven't tried these at night actually. In daylight conditions, this gives you pin sharp. All the way to the edges is pin sharp, which was which actually amazed me when I came back and tried it. Uh, and I really wish I'd taken them. It's it's a 120 degrees wide angle lens, same as the the Aki. Um, but it's obviously it's a lot smaller. I mean, if I just clip this onto the iPad, I mean it's very discreet. Which is nice because it doesn't mean you know the other one. Whilst that's got a nice weight to it, it does kind of throw the balance off a little bit on your phone. Um, 
I keep moving this camera about, sorry. This one doesn't, it's really light. And you think, you know, part of me thinks, oh, it's, it's obviously quite cheap. Um, and they are fairly cheap. I mean, the glass, the glass on it is nice. I don't know if we can see. It's, it's you know, it's, it's pretty good. It doesn't have that anti-reflective kit that the, the Oki one does. Um, but in tests, these were better than the Oki. So, um, so yeah, so basically you've got this nice wide angle lens, um, which does take great shots and you, you unscrew this and take that bit off and that on its own acts as a macro lens. Um, yeah, I just dropped it. It survived, it's fine, it's fine. It wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't drop stuff. Um, yeah, so the the Oki to its favour, you don't have to unscrew anything. You know, if you use it as is, it's a wide angle lens. If you go really close up, it's a macro lens. So you don't have to unscrew anything. But the results out of this are really nice. The macro is, is really good. It's really sharp. Um, the wide angle lens was, was what kind of really got me. The quality of that, like I say, the edges of everything were, were pin sharp, which was which was great. Um, the circular polarizing filter, um, which is again here for there's the Oki version. There is that version. You can you can actually see through the camera there. If I move that about, you'll see the difference. If I move to the, the side, there you go. You can see that it just kind of cuts out the color a little bit. So if you're pointing at something really bright you know, it does uh, cut out the kind of, gives you more dynamic range. So like I say, clouds and things like that. Um, it's great for doing all that. And, and water, you can you can see through water because it cuts out the reflections of the sun or whatever on the water. So normally if you take a shot into water, like a, a river or something like that, you'll just see the surface reflection, but that cuts out that reflection so you can actually see into the water, which is really nice. Um, and that CPL lens works just as good as the, the Oki one. Um, the fisheye lens is good fun. I don't know really what you would use it for. I've, I've noticed some vloggers using it before. It gives that kind of fishbowl thing where where stuff, it looks like the, the room's bending round about you. Um, it's good fun. I wouldn't use it all the time. But the quality of the lens is really good. You do get some vignetting round about it. Um, and if you don't know vignetting, it's when you see kind of black borders slightly. Uh, like circular borders around the, the edge of a, a photograph. Um, some people use it as an artistic technique. Um, usually it's kind of unwanted because it means that something's kind of encroaching on your lens, on your aperture, but um, you do get some vignetting with a fisheye lens, but I think most of them do that anyway, just because of the nature of the lens. Um, and the last one on, on here is the two times zoom lens. Now, that was an experiment that I tried with my phone because the iPhone 7 Plus has a two times zoom lens. Um, it's not a telephoto lens, it's just the, the aperture, the way it works. Anyway, um, I thought, you know, in theory, if I put that on my zoom lens, I'll get four times optical zoom, which is great because you don't want digital zoom. If you start zooming in, pinching, zooming in, zoom into things, you just lose quality on your phone. So, so don't pinch and zoom when you're taking photos of things. Um, but the the two times zoom lens for me is basically a waste of time um, because I put it on the normal lens and it gives me two times zoom, which matches what my two times zoom lens does anyway. So basically I get the same thing. And if I put it on the, the zoom lens, because of the way the iPhone works, it doesn't really work because the zoom, the, the zoom lens only works if there's a lot of light so if you put that on, it kind of covers it up and it thinks there's not a lot of light and it just it gets its knickers in a twist. So basically, I don't use the two times zoom lens. Now, if you have any other phone, you know, the, the iPhone 6 or the iPhone 7 or the, the iPhone S or whatever, uh, SE, sorry, um, that don't have the zoom lens, then you will get the equivalent of the iPhone 7 Plus and above um, using that lens. And the quality is really good. Um, so, you know, if you don't want to stump up for a, a phone with the dual lenses on it, you can emulate that using this. And it is optical zoom, it's not digital zoom, so you don't lose any of the quality of the photos. 
um, it can lead to a little bit of a uh, chromatic aberration it, it, which is where you see if you take a photo of something like a, I don't know a, a bridge or something like that uh, where you've got the sky behind it and you know you've obviously got a bridge in front of it sometimes you see along the kind of edge of the bridge or whatever whatever you're taking a shot of you can see little kind of artifacts red and kind of yellow it's like where it split the pixels slightly that's called chromatic aberration and you can get rid of that using software there's some software which i'll talk about in the next video uh, which you can use to kind of counteract that a little bit um but i mean it's very slight and you have to be really nitpicky to notice it um but you know that just due to the way the lens works you do you do kind of get some of that you don't get that using the 7 plus because the lens is all built in and all that kind of stuff but the general takeaway thing is, if you are looking for a lens kit for your phone, if you want to start playing with that kind of stuff, then get the cam kit kit. It's not expensive, relatively. I think, like I say, it's, it's about £20, something like that. Um, but it's a great set of lenses to let you try these things. And, you know, macro photography is great fun. You go out, take photos of flowers, get really close, you know, or coins or whatever you want. I like taking photos of flowers really close. It's amazing what kind of stuff you can find yourself, even just walking around the garden, you know, taking photos of these things. Um, but get the Cam Kicks lens kit. And again, I'll put links to all this stuff down below. Um, you know, there, there's lots of these sort of cheap lens kits. Um, I took a a bit of gamble on that one and it turned out to pay off you know it's it's good enough to do all the photographs that you want to do if i had taken that to new york i would have been really happy with it and um, the Oki lens kit you know i might i might sell that on or something i don't know because it's essentially a redundant kit i might go out and give it another go you know just to see in case i've missed something um in case it's been a, a problem on my part but generally speaking i was more impressed with the cam kicks lenses um, and it has the added bonus that you get, you know, the extra, uh, the, the shutter release and all that kind of stuff. Which brings me to my last point that I was going to talk about, the last accessory. Um, the remote shutter thing is brilliant because if you're taking uh, like long exposure photographs or anything like that or night shots, you don't want the camera to move when you're doing that because obviously then it blurs everything out of focus. So you really want that remote um, shutter release. Now there's various ways you can do that kind of thing. You can either set a little timer on the phone so that you know after three seconds it takes a shot so you press it and you step away and you don't touch it and that's all great. You can plug in your Apple earbuds um, into the phone and you use the volume control and that will take the, the photo for you which is another great kind of remote release but you have to be kind of close to the f phone to do that you know it gives you maybe three feet or something like that. Um, the little these things are also great you know because then it's wireless you can stand for the back and take your shot or do whatever you want um but the the downside to that is that it is that's bluetooth so you know there's a battery in here which will eventually run out and you'll need to replace and using bluetooth on your phone for the remote will also run your battery down uh if i'm going out to take a long photo shot uh, you know photo shoots i'll turn off wi-fi and bluetooth um, because it obviously extends your 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 battery life, um, but you know if you if you want to use the kind of remote release thing, then you need Bluetooth on. It won't kill your battery a lot, but it, you know it's another little thing that's just eating away at your battery. Um, you can turn it off, and then when you're going to use the shot, obviously turn it back on. All these kind of things. Um, but one thing that when I'm taking low shots, and I mentioned at the start of the video about the. Uh, the selfie stick or if you've got a tripod um i did have a little tripod <sighs> sorry these little mini tripods are great these are if you live in the uk the pound shop sells these pound land and whatnot sell these and they're great um great little mini tripods um I am filming on one of these at the moment, um, which is why I keep moving the camera about when I'm putting stuff on the table. Um, but these extend out to give you a nice little tripod, you know, and that just extends to hold your phone or whatever. Um, and the great thing about these is if you have a professional tripod, but like a bigger tripod, which I have, excuse me while I reach off camera again. 
So I've got this big tripod that I used to use with my, my bridge camera. And the mount on the top of this, let me just take this off. So that screws into the bottom of your camera. But the great thing about these is the screw mount on it is universal. So you can screw it onto that. To do it like that, and then that will sit on your tripod, and then you can go out and take proper photos using your proper, your proper tripod. And then I just put that down there. So these little these little tripods are great, and like I say, they're only a quid. So I've got a couple of them uh, in case they break. Um, I take that one out with me, and they're great for doing uh, low shots. You know, put put on the deck. Um, and they're a quid, so you, you know you can put these in, like rivers or whatever. If you're, you know, if there's a little bit of a bank or something, you can put that in the water. And at the end of the day, it's a pound. You're not going to worry if it starts rusting off. You'll just get another one. So these are really great. You know, get a, get a few of these. Spend a five or get yourself five tripods and just keep them in your bag or whatever. Um, but really low shots like that, you obviously you can't see your screen uh, unless you're crouched down or whatever. But it can be a bit uncomfortable, especially if your phone is low down on the deck, because obviously that you know your phone's going to be sitting about that much off the floor, and if it's angled shooting down the way into something, then you're you're not really going to see what you're doing. So having a remote screen would be fantastic. Now I'm not aware of any remote screens for the iPhone. You can get them for for DSLRs and all that kind of stuff, wireless screens, monitors that are like your your phone, the size of your phone. Um, and I completely forgot that you can use, a, you do have a remote screen option. It's quite an expensive option, but it's that. The Apple Watch, which I completely forgot about, um, does tie into your camera. Um, you, the stock camera app, you bring it up and it, uh, and it gives you a remote shutter button. So you can tap the button and take your photograph start recording whatever it does all that kind of stuff um, you can pinch and zoom you can tap to focus so all the functionality of the camera is available on the watch but it also mirrors the screen so you can see it's a remote screen for your phone so if you've got the phone you know if you're holding it up on a selfie stick and it's six feet seven feet up in the air and you can't see the screen you use that and you can see it and you know as silly as it seems if you're holding your phone up and you're looking at your watch obviously you need something else to tap the screen because you can't then do that kind of thing, tap it with your nose. It looks really stupid, but it works. You can tap the phone with your nose. So you take the photograph, you can actually tap it with your nose, um, which I have done, and it looks really stupid, but you know, to get that photograph, you do what you have to do. Um, so yeah, so if you've got an Apple Watch, remember you can use it as a remote shutter release and the remote screen for, uh, <clears throat> for your camera. Some of the third party apps that I'll talk about in another video also have apps for the, the watch to do the same kind of functionality. I found that the lag between those is a little bit kind of, uh, you know, if you move the camera, it takes a little second to update on the watch, whereas the, the actual stock camera app is like real time. There's no delay whatsoever, um, which is great. But if you're taking sort of professional photographs using third party apps, you really want to be using them for depending on what you're doing but i'll be talking about all that in another video um because i've already talked enough this has run on for about 40 minutes as it is so um anyway i'll stick on some of the 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 photographs uh to let you see the the difference between the different lenses and things and remember i've got the iphone photography blog where you can actually click the pictures and see them sort of for real rather than uh, you know, via YouTube, you can download them and have a look at them uh, yourself and see what you think. Um, so anyway, let's let's have a look at these uh, these comparison photographs, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll just run through them and I'll I'll just say on them what what they were rather than giving you uh, commentary and all that because I'm sure you're fed up listening to my voice already. Um, I'll put on what the the lens was, um, you know, with without and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and maybe little notes about what I think about the lens. Uh, there will be notes to all the kit that I've bought, um, which I think, yeah, all, apart from the tripods from the pound shop, uh, go to the pound shop and get some of these, everything else came from Amazon. So I'll put links to it all uh, down below and you can have a look and see 
see what you think. Um, but for now, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, let me know. Get in touch. And uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll see you next time. So enjoy the photographs and I'll, I'll see you soon.